Well, greetings. Hello there. And on behalf of the best state medical association in all 50 states, let me welcome you to the Texas Medical Association's new delegate orientation video. My name is Brad Holland, and it is my pleasure to serve as your Speaker of the House for the Texas Medical Association. I am an otolaryngologist who has practiced for 20 years in McLennan County, Waco, Texas. As you begin your service in TMA's House of Delegates and within organized medicine, we hope you will find this overview of the association helpful. But first, a little history. The Texas Medical Association began when 35 pioneer physicians rode to Austin by horseback, stagecoach, and railroad in 1853 to organize the Texas Medical Association. This painting you see here, which depicts the first meeting of Texas physicians in Austin at the Methodist Church on Congress Avenue in 1853, was a gift to TMA in the mid-1950s. After its establishment, members of the association were interrupted from meeting for 16 years by the Civil War, as well as epidemics of cholera, malaria, and yellow fever. Hmm. Having meetings interrupted by epidemics, we do know how that feels. After several years of meeting in various towns and around the state, by 1900, the association was ready to put down roots, and it did so in 1903 in Fort Worth, where the first TMA offices were headquartered. But by 1950, the association decided to move its headquarters to Austin, Texas, where it remains to this day. So how does the House of Delegates work and what role do you play as a delegate? The House of Delegates is made up of 500 voting members. It is the legislative and policy-making body of the association, and its members include county medical society delegates and alternate delegates, as well as ex officio members. Ex officio members of the House include trustees, past presidents and speakers of the association, 15 counselors, delegates, and alternate delegates to the AMA, members to the Council on Legislation, council chairs, section delegates, as well as specialty society delegates whose specialty societies have been approved by our House. Sections with representation in the House of Delegates are the Women Physician Section, the LGBTQ Health Section, the International Medical Graduate Section, the Young Physician Section, the Resident and Fellow Section, and last but certainly not least, the Medical Student Section. Whether you are an elected County Society Delegate, Section Delegate, or ex officio member of the House, your role is twofold. One, to bring grassroots concerns and opinions to the House, and two, to report back to fellow County Medical Society members, sections, and specialty societies, the actions of the House and the latest information impacting the practice of medicine. The TMA House of Delegates plays two key roles within the organization, setting policy for TMA and electing association leadership. The House is governed by the TMA Constitution and bylaws, the TMA House Standing Rules, and the American Institute of Parliamentarians Standard Code of Parliamentary Procedure, or AIPSC. It is now my privilege to introduce an outstanding physician leader within our organization and someone with whom I enjoy very much working. Let me introduce to you your vice speaker, John Flores. Thank you, Dr. Holland. My name is John Flores. I'm the vice speaker of the House of Delegates. For centuries, organizations have used rules to keep their meetings organized, efficient, courteous, and fair. These rules and procedures ensure that all its members are able to fully participate in reaching decisions through debate and majority vote. One of the most important tenets of these rules is the ranking of actions or motions in the House. During our meetings, we will only consider one question or motion at a time, and how we will process that motion is governed by the ranking system with higher ranked motions taking precedence. This is further discussed in the handbook. The handbook for delegates is essential reading for all our delegates and alternates. It's published online at textmed.org forward slash HOD several weeks before each annual session of our House of Delegates. Handbooks are posted on the HOD website in time for our members to prepare before delegates act upon the reports and resolutions at the annual session meeting. Let's go through some of the different tabs. The general information tab includes what to do when, all enlisting all the House-related meetings, the House standing rules, 
a list of reference committee members, caucus meeting maps and locations so you can be there on time, the seating chart for Saturday's session of the HOD, the TMA governance structure, the flow chart of action items for the HOD, an excerpt from Sturgis, listing types of motions and how disposed. That was some of what was showed on that first slide when I began my talk. The TMA's conflict of interest policy, the roster of TMA officers, boards, councils, committees, and section officers. The second tab, the composition tab, includes the HOD composition, a list of members by category and total numbers. There's also a list by alphabetical order, the house members, city, specialty, position, and district. Delegates and alternates by County Medical Society and the ex officio list. The election tab includes information on the positions to be filled and their terms, the councilor districts map, and candidate information. The audit trail tab includes report status and implementation of previous year's HOD action items. The agendas tab includes agendas for the opening session on Friday, the regular session on Saturday, and the order of business listing all business items. The information reports tab includes reports with no action necessary. The reference committees tab includes all reports and resolutions for action arranged by the reference committee to which the report or resolution is being referred. Reference committees act on all items and present the reports to the HOD on Saturday for the House to determine its course of action. As you can see, the handbook for delegates is chock full of information for delegates and is one of the best navigation tools during the annual session. Let's now discuss the process by which your resolutions reports become TMA actions through the recommendations of your reference committees. From idea to policy, we begin with a resolution from a single house member or a single county medical society or section or a report from a single TMA council or committee and end with a potential for far-reaching impact. There are two ways of bringing business to the House of Delegates, recommendations, and resolutions. Recommendations come through TMA boards, sections, councils, and committees in the form of reports. Resolutions are submitted only by county medical societies, sections, and individual voting members of the House. The speakers appoint reference committees, which consist of a chair and six members who serve for one session. Members are selected based on interest in serving and reflect the demographics of TA, TMA members, specialties, and experience. The speaker refers each resolution and action report, a report containing recommendations, to a reference committee based on topic. The four reference committees include financial and organizational affairs, medical education and health care quality, science and public health, and socioeconomics. After an action report or a resolution is submitted, the speakers assign the item to one of the House reference committees. After the publication of the TMA Handbook for Delegates, online testimony opens. A link to provide testimony is available at the HOD website at textmed.org forward slash HOD. After close of online testimony, your reference committee members will meet in executive session to review all submitted testimony and draft recommendations for the House in an interim reference committee report to the House of Delegates. This report will be published on the HOD webpage and is emailed to delegates and alternates. After the opening business session of the House, reference committee hearings are held live, in person, or virtual depending on circumstances. Any member of the TMA is welcome to testify on the recommendations of the interim reference committee report. Staff and non-members may not testify. Your speakers encourage members to use the REFCOM as a sounding board to offer suggestions to improve the resolutions through amendments that the reference committee may incorporate into the recommendations. This will facilitate business during the actual meeting of the House of Delegates. Following the live hearings, Reference committees meet in executive session to finalize the recommendations to the House in the final reference committee report. 
These reports are published online and delivered at your morning caucus meetings, where County Medical Society caucuses meet to strategize on their collective response to issues. The House of Delegates then hears the Reference Committee reports. As each report is presented, delegates have an opportunity to extract any item they wish to debate. An item must be extracted to debate. After extraction, the House approves the remainder of the Reference Committee report on a consent calendar. The House then debates extracted items in the order that they appear on the Reference Committee report and votes to adopt, not adopt, refer, or amend. The speakers refer items for implementation and referred items for study or decisions to the TMA components. All actions taken by the TMA in regard to these items are recorded in the TMA audit trail. There are four choices in the House for an item. Adopt, not adopt, refer either for study or decision. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later. Or amend. Refer may be for study or for action decision. If an item is referred for study or unspecified, the body to which it is assigned will investigate and report back to the House at the next meeting. If an item is referred for action decision, the TMA Board of Trustees or the TMA Board of Counselors has been given full authority to adopt, not adopt, amend, or to refer the item further. Once a motion to refer is adopted, the original item has been disposed of by the House and becomes the business of the body to which it is assigned. All referred items will include a report back at the next annual meeting of the House. I'll now hand it back to Dr. Holland to speak on how to provide testimony during reference committee hearings and on the House floor. Well, thank you, Dr. Flores. When providing testimony, be sure to always state your name, who you are speaking on behalf of, whether it be yourself or your section or your delegation, state any conflicts of interest you may have, and whether you are for or against the item or motion being discussed. If you forget to disclose this information, your speakers may kindly interrupt your testimony to remind you. Delegates and alternates, once recognized by the speaker, are given two minutes to speak. A member of the House may not be recognized more than twice on any given motion, and a member of the House may not be recognized a second time if anyone else wishes to speak who has not yet spoken. The speaker may extend the two-minute limit to those who wish to address the House longer to people such as special guests or invited dignitaries or subject matter ex experts. Alternate delegates may address the House by approaching the alternate delegate microphone and waiting to be called upon by the speaker. Recognition of alternate delegates is at the discretion of the speaker, and alternate delegates may neither make motions nor alter the business of the House nor vote. Debate on resolutions considered by the full House shall be limited to 15 collective minutes of testimony per resolution. When the time expires, the Speaker will invite a motion to extend debate. Otherwise, the Speaker will enact a motion to close debate and vote on all pending motions. Dr. Flores and I will now demonstrate the correct way and incorrect way to testify at a hearing or meeting. Next on the agenda before you is item number one. Resolved that the Texas Medical Association hold a charity horseshoe throwing tournament against the Texas Hospital Association. Your reference committee recommends adoption. The House recognizes a speaker at microphone number one. Microphone number one, you are recognized. Yes, thank you, Dr. Speaker. I speak in favor of adoption. Now, I believe our team. Our TMA... speaker is going to kindly interrupt the delegate in the cowboy hat uh, to remind him that before you start giving your testimony, Please uh, state your name, who you are speaking on behalf of, and disclose if you have any conflicts of interest before you start your testimony. Of course, my apologies. I'm Dr. Doolittle, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Dawson County Medical Society, and I have no conflicts of interest. Microphone number two. Dr. Speaker, I am Dr. Zhivago speaking on behalf of myself and the Wegefarth County Medical Society. And I moved an amendment to amend the item by adding the additional clause at the end of this resolution, which reads, and the funds from this tournament go towards the following healthcare causes. Uh, Dr. Chivago, have you submitted this amendment language to the House staff either through email or using the amendment forms at the back of the room? Uh, no, no, I have not. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I will do that. 
All right. Since your amendment is longer than three words, please submit this language to the staff before proceeding further so that we can project it to the entire house. Thank you. The speaker recognizes the alternate delegate at microphone number three. Microphone number three. Dr. Strange, alternate delegate, speaking on behalf of myself with no conflicts of interest. I move to refer this for study. Uh, Dr. Strange, uh, you are testifying as an alternate delegate, and your motion, unfortunately, is out of order. Now, we do welcome alternate delegates to the House floor to listen and speak, but alternate delegates may neither make motions nor alter the business of the House nor vote. So if a voting member of the House uh, makes a motion to refer and it is seconded, you are welcome to testify either for or against its referral. However, this motion must come from a delegate. The delegate from the Lone Star Caucus has made a motion to refer. There is a second. The motion before you is referral. The House recognizes the speaker at microphone number one. Thank you, Dr. Speaker. I am Dr. Jekyll. And on behalf of the Foley County Medical Society, I have no conflicts of interest. I move to insert the word annually at the end of this result. Dr. Jekyll, we are currently taking testimony on referral. Referral is a higher order motion, so your motion is out of order. You are welcome to testify against referral, but must wait until the motion refer has been disposed of by the House before making a motion to amend. And now let's demonstrate an example of an efficient and effective testimony. Microphone number two. Dr. Speaker, I am Dr. Pepper, and on behalf of the Ensenal County Medical Society, I have no conflicts of interest. I move to refer this item for study. Your motion is in order. Before you is a motion to refer for study. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there discussion on this motion? Dr. Pepper at microphone number two again. Thank you, Dr. Speaker. The Ensenal County Medical Society believes that this matter should be studied further and that more information is needed before the House can make an informed vote on whether to adopt or not. We hope you found that both entertaining and informational. Now we'd like to offer some advice on submitting amendments and voting. During an in-person meeting of the House, delegates who wish to offer amendments greater than three words must use the form available at the technology table located in the House meeting room or email their amendments to hod at tetsmed.org. For House meetings using virtual technology, members must email amendments greater than three words to hod at tetsmed.org. Even once amendment language is submitted, delegates must still make a motion on the floor to propose their amendment language. Remember, Friday's session is just as important as Saturday's. The House votes and must have quorum on both days. Delegates and alternates should be sure to check in at the Credentials Committee table to receive their conference badges and report their attendance with the committee. For an efficient and effective meeting, we encourage you to understand how parliamentary procedure works and that your electronic voting units work also. Information on these topics can be found in the General Information tab in the handbook. Candidate profile pages are posted at the TMA HOD web page weeks in advance of the meeting. Be sure to attend the candidate forum to know, get to know your candidates and future TMA leaders. Ask questions and learn who may be representing you. And again, understand how electronic voting units work for elections. If you don't know, the TMA Information Technology staff is on site and can assist you. Make the most of your meetings. Study the handbook for delegates before you arrive at the meeting. Know what reports and resolutions are recommended. Handbooks are posted online. Hard copies are available upon request. Attend your caucus meetings. Room locations are posted online and what to do in the handbook. The HOD summary is posted on the HOD webpage following each annual session. Discuss actions taken by the House at your county meetings. So what happens after TextMed? After the meeting, your speakers will send out an updated speakers letter with a link to the House of Delegates Summary Actions, which lists all decisions made by the House on action items. Action items that were adopted will be assigned to TMA components for implementation. And when necessary, the TMA Policy Compendium will be updated. You can follow the TMA's progress on each item through the House of Delegates Audit Trail. 
This document gets updated following TMA's fall and winter conferences, and a final version is published in next year's handbook. Once a resolution is adopted by the House, it is automatically added to the TMA audit trail. The audit trail is TMA's ways of tracking each adopted item and reporting back on its status at the meeting of the next House of Delegates. Every item is referred to a TMA component, board, council, or committee, or task force by the TMA Board of Trustees for any needed action. The impact of TMA House is far-reaching. For your use, policy statements are kept in the TMA Policy Compendium and are available on the TMA webpage. More on that to follow. In addition to being referred to a board, council, or committee, an item may simply be added to the TMA Policy Compendium. Each time a vote is taken in the House, Delegates have pointed the association in a certain direction and have established association policy. While some policies call for immediate short-term action, other policies have long-term effect. Recommendations for long-term association policy are maintained at the policy compendium at www.texmed.org policy. The TMA policy compendium will allow you to search through current policies with keywords or view full policy index organized by subject area. As we conclude this delegate orientation video, we certainly hope that you have found this presentation educational and we thank you for viewing it. To claim CME credit, follow the instructions in the description below this video. If you are viewing this presentation before April 12th, we encourage you to join us live uh, at a virtual Q&A session set for Tuesday, April 12th at 7 p.m. At this session, members will have the opportunity to submit questions for your speakers and view practice proceedings on how to testify before a reference committee or the House. If you like, you may read the speaker's letter on the House of Delegates webpage for more information, or you can contact your House of Delegates staff. We both realize this process may be unfamiliar to many of you, and we appreciate your willingness to dedicate time away from your family and practices to improve how your TMA functions. Dr. Flores and I look forward to meeting you in person and encourage you to ask us any questions that you may have or encounter during your time as a delegate. Remember, we were both in your shoes many years ago as new delegates. But we want to welcome you and thank you, and we hope to see you at the next annual section of the TMA House of Delegates.